Can you talk us through the decision to request the game be played in Brisbane, I guess, uh, the reasons behind it and, uh, and the process that you went through? Yeah, it wasn't exactly a request, Rory. Um, more an ongoing discussion. The AFL are obviously uh, really um, motivated to ensure that the fixture is um, as uninterrupted as it can be. Uh, the evolving situation in Perth with lockdown, you know, the weekend before last and the imminent threat of it on the weekend gone, we were having some ongoing discussions throughout that period. Um, probably had the rare situation of a return home game that allowed the option to be considered. Um, and you can imagine from an AFL's perspective, being able to do that, and whilst things are tracking relatively positive in the last couple of days, it doesn't take much, as we all know here in Perth, you know, for a potential lockdown to be implemented again. So you weigh all that up, um, you know, along with the fact that we've had two games at Optus in the last couple of weeks, three in the last month, um, means that it was a, a pretty logical step for us to take, um, albeit our preference was to, to stay here and play this weekend. Is it a straightforward trade, or do you need to throw in something to get it now? No, it's um, pretty much a straight swap. Yeah, there was there was no steak knives or or any inducement that had to go out to Brisbane and Greg Swan. Um, yeah, they'll have the home game this weekend, and we get the return bout around twenty one. How long are you planning to be away from Swan? Yeah, at this point, um, all indications are that we'll um, travel up tomorrow to the Gold Coast, base ourselves there, um, head to the Gabba to play. Brisbane on Sunday, um, base ourselves at the Gold Coast for the following week and head down to Melbourne as we would for a normal home game against the Bombers. So we'll likely go on the Friday, I'd suggest, and then head back to Perth following the Essendon game. Are you packing for it just in case you might stay a bit longer? Oh, there is that sense to it, but um, you know that'll obviously be dictated to by what happens here in Perth. Um, so you know, fingers crossed for us all that it continues to track in a positive direction and we can come back on that Sunday. Um, but it is a real thing that we have to consider. Obviously, yeah, and pretty quickly, how do you come to a decision on how much to pack up and take over both equipment and personnel-wise? Yeah, look, you just deal with the information at hand and, and what's in front of us at the moment. You know, clearly, the, the, the strong preference in the planning is it'll be for the next two games, but just make some allowances um, you know, from a personnel and an, an equipment um, perspective and the all-important underwear to make sure you've got enough to cover you in the instance it goes a bit longer. Trickier, given so I guess if some guys will have to stay behind and play waffle. I think there's no waffle the following mm. week. How do you, like, how many do you leave behind? Yeah, it, it's it, it isn't exactly straightforward, but a judgment calls for us at the moment. The guys are finalising it as we speak. It's obviously a rapidly evolving situation, but um, we'll look to take in the order of, of 30 or so, uh, perhaps in the low 30s. Uh, of a squad with us. Um, there's some guys there that are starting to play some really good footy and peel and you want to make sure that they have the opportunities there. So it's a, it's a balancing act to make sure we get it right. There's clearly the option if things progress as well that there might be opportunities for us to send people back or bring them over um, if things continue in a positive fashion. But clearly we need to you know, um, plan for the worst and, and hope for the best. Financially, is this a lifesaver? Uh, look, that's certainly a benefit. It wasn't the absolute driver, but for our our members and fans at this point in time, you know, we've, we've had sort of ongoing dialogue and discussions with the state government. Um, there's there's no assurance yet of there being a crowd on this um, for us our game this Sunday. Um, if it was, it's logical to think it'd be at restricted capacity um, and with masks and other things in place. So um, the the prospect of you know round 21 situation being different and it being uninhibited is clearly a positive one for us um, and it's more i suppose of an ancillary benefit um, i spoke about the main motivators before and if that can be a turnaround and our full members and fans get full access to it in round 21 that'll be a great result how hard it is it when you play a game with an empty stadium sorry I'm how sorry. hard a game how hard a kid is it for the club when you play a game with an empty stadium uh, it's significant. Yeah, we spoke about it last week. Uh, obviously, it depends a bit on the game itself, um, the, the likely crowd. Uh, there's direct costs, you know, including ticket sales that you have from a walk-up basis. But then you've also got to consider the fact that you need to work with your members from a compensation point of view in the sense that they bought a full 11 game home seated package. So um, there's no skirting around the fact that it's a, a really significant hit. Um, Hopefully we're we're quarantining that to one home game um, for the for the 2021 season, and 
we move forward and get the rest of our, our full complement done. I think last year, I think the financial report, you uh, reported a $1 million loss and I think $3 million in cash reserves. Is, assuming you get the rest of the season from like normal, how does this game and the last game of the Lampour game impact that situation? Yeah, as I said, Rory, it's, it's hard to put an exact figure on it because the realities we're still working through. Um, some of the, 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 the actions we need to undertake for our members who weren't able to attend. Um, you know, it's, it's absolutely a seven figure hit in that sense. Um, the, the really disappointing element for us for our round six game was it was the Len Hall tribute, which, you know, our home, home derby aside is probably our signature home game for the year. So it was incredibly disappointing from that perspective, us not being able to recognise our, our armed service men and women. Um, but the reality is our guys, have, our club's done an unbelievable job over the last 12 to 18 months, our members have been incredible. Um, we're, we're quietly confident if we are able to have the, the full remainder of our home games that we'll get through the year in, in pretty reasonable shape. Clearly unknown as if we're further impacted. Simon, so was it the Queensland government that had the final say? Were there any sticking points that the club or Gareth had to sort of tick off before that decision was made? Yeah, the, the Queensland government obviously um, been working, the AFL have been working closely with the Queensland government direct in relation to that. Um, you know, we've, we've looked, uh, mentioned earlier on, ever since the lockdown occurred a couple of weekends ago, we've looked to be ultra conservative, um, restricting our key personnel and players' movements, um, being tested twice weekly, maybe even more, um, twice as a, as a minimum, obviously going over on charter flights. So all of those things add up. Um, to assist us in your discussions with you know, governments in other states and jurisdictions. So um, they're a really important stakeholder in all this. The AFL will continue to work closely with them. Um, we're obviously really hopeful that there's no further issues here and it just go on as, as planned. Any complaints from the footy department given bouncing back on times to might have been a slightly easier prospect? No, I mean, you obviously we look to try and consult as best as we can, even though some of these things happen pretty rapidly. Um, you know, from our perspective, we, we took a significant amount of positives out of the two hub stints we had last year. Um, you know, whilst no um, disputing the fact it was a disappointing result on the weekend, sometimes getting on the road. I mentioned it can be a really positive thing. I mentioned the fact that um, you know, we've had the slightly fortunate circumstances of the last two games played at Optus Stadium, three of the last four here in Perth as well too. So. In that sort of sense, it's not a, a big imposition. It won't be an issue for us hitting the road. And if anything else, I think it's an opportunity for us to, to bring that tight knit group together on the road, which is hard to replicate when you're in your own rooms. Do you know what the restrictions will be like in Queensland? We still have to wear masks or? My understanding is that we're basically uninhibited. Um, we know the, the venues that we're staying at, the training facilities are first class. Um, so that's a real positive in that sense. Clearly there is some still restrictions in WA as we all know. Um, that could be heightened significantly if there's any issues here. So to go there um, and to know that our training and preparation for the next couple of weeks will be completely uninhibited is, is a positive. And are the players all willing and happy to go? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it was, it was on the record last year. Um, apart from a couple of our older guys with family, we're a predominantly young group. You know, we're the fifth, fifth youngest squad or list in the competition. Um, therefore, there's a lot of guys who don't have um, the family concerns that most some, some of the other clubs would have. Uh, opportunity for us to, to get on the road. Um, there's a lot worse places to go. So I think once the, the football department and the playing group themselves get their head around it, it's actually a fair bit of excitement and anticipation that we take on this trip. Have you looked at it beyond the next couple of games to see how long it might be feasible to stay on the road if restrictions do tighten up or stay the way they are here? Yeah, we have, not in absolute detail, but you, you look ahead, um, clearly the, the fervent hope is that we get back into Perth straight after the Essendon game, but understand that there might be some fluidity in that. Um, you know, we come back to play Sydney that following weekend, that's where we're focusing on ANG. Um, the hypotheticals can send, send you around the loop a little bit, so you've got to be careful diving down that rabbit hole too much, but it's something that we keep uh, a mind to from an administrative perspective, but certainly let the playing group get on with it. And, and when and if there's some things we've got to encounter from that perspective, we'll deal with it then. And so there was a discussion getting to this point where this game is being played in Brisbane 
is discuss, do discussions need to happen now for something to happen beyond the next couple of games? Do you need to be having those conversations? Oh, I, I, think, I think they would be had in earnest if there was a change in the status here in WA. You know, clearly, I think we've had three or four days of zero community transmissions. Um, that's heading in the right direction. If that was to change in the next couple of days, I think we'd have to really start to to, to look at that in earnest. But in this point in time, I think you know it's heading in the right direction for us. The thinking about flying out tomorrow as opposed to say Friday for a regular away game that's to give the players more time to get used to where they're going to be based. Yeah, a bit of both. Um, you know, part of the discussions with Queensland government is their recommendation. You know. That the earlier we get in the better in the instance that something was to occur here um you know that's something that we had to take into account um it's the longest trip in footy the, the perth to, to brisbane so to get there um with a couple of extra days you know we're obviously going to settle into an environment um allows the group to to really settle and get familiar with their surroundings and get some solid training sessions in ahead of a, a really exciting game on sunday the premier this morning said that it the, the club now probably made a sensible, practical decision. Do you take any comfort from that, given the circumstances you've won ourselves in? Uh, I hadn't heard that. Um, look, you, you, we've obviously in continual dialogue with the Premier and his office. Um, our priorities, you know, our playing group, um, staff and our members and supporters. So um, it's nice that the Premier thought it was a, a sensible decision. Um, but, you know, obviously our, our main motivator is to to make the decision with all the information in front of us and trying to make sure it's the, it's the right balance one. Where would you be staying? Uh, we'll be staying at the McCure Resort. So that was one of the, the resorts that were um, used last year in the hubs up in southeast Queensland. So um, base ourselves there, up there, obviously a short trip up to, to Brisbane. Um, yeah, it's, it's a fortunate scenario. You're not wanting for much. Uh, our preparation will be first class. The facilities are fantastic give ourselves a great opportunity to put in some strong performances over the next couple of weeks. Lines pretty accommodating? What's that, sorry? Lines pretty accommodating of it all? Yeah, I mean, the lines are a case in point. Um, we all know early in the year, I can't remember, it's around two or three. You know, they were half an hour away, I think, from flying back into Brisbane into a lockdown scenario. So they're familiar with uh, the changes that sometimes need to occur on the run. Um, had some good chats with Greg Swan and the AFL dealing with them obviously as well too, um, gives them another opportunity for a home game uh, on the way home. That means they have to travel a little bit more. So uh, I think we've found as a competition, um, looking at the greater good from time to time is just something we need to do. So they're, they're really good about it.